Hi again, welcome to The Way I Do It. If you haven't been here before, my name is Chris. If you have been here before, my name is still Chris. I'm located in Jamestown, New York. Uh, project at hand today is repairing the radiator in my Minneapolis Moline Jetstar 3 Super. It's a 1970 tractor and I've been nursing it all year. The tractor's stored outside during the winter. I check the antifreeze to make sure it's uh, good before uh, the winter comes, but uh, it got a crack in it, and I think the crack was from basically a rust jack. I had repaired it a number of years ago after it frozen, and uh, it was just kind of a bad repair with uh, bridging the crack, which uh, you can kind of see later what happened. Uh, a couple of things I do want to say about the uh, repair is first, why not replace it? Well, the radiator's not bad. The, uh, the tanks are all good solid brass. The fins are all in place. There's a couple that have been damaged and uh, taken out of service. Um, and everything looks good. Now, back in the uh, 60s and 70s, being in upstate New York, we used to get a lot of automotive radiators that they would just rot right out. Even when we got into the aluminum radiators into the 80s, the fins would just rot right out. They would get salt on them from the roads and they would just rot and corrode. And the tubes, if you touched them with a screwdriver or pliers or anything, they would just collapse. I don't know what in them was uh, being eaten by the salt, but they were just terrible. And it, it, it just, you know, I can digress back to the, when the automakers tried to save money on seatbelts. Uh, you know, my old 69 Chevy pickup. Had a spot in the top to bolt in a seat belt, or a shoulder belt, but it wasn't required, so they didn't put it in. So, anyhow, back to this tractor. Um, a new radiator is about $500, and this repair cost me $0. The solder I found at an auction, yard sale, for pennies. The paint was pennies. Uh, I did buy flux. Uh, there's a certain kind of flux that my dad used and I like. Uh, as far as my experience in radiators, well, when I was a kid, we used to monkey with radiators, but we had a neighbor about two miles down the road that had a radiator shop. His, his name was uh, Bill Barkman, and old Bill worked at the radiator factory during the day. It was uh, known as Blackstone back then, now it's Valio Cooling Systems now, and of course they don't produce any copper radiators anymore. But he was a copper radiator builder all day long. And Bill would come home at night. He had a little old wooden garage. Uh, you know, this is in the 1970s and 80s. And he had set up a radiator repair shop in the garage. He had a big water tank that he could submerge the radiator in. And he'd put air to it from his air compressor. He wouldn't have a pump up. He'd put caps on it. He'd find the leak and he'd make repairs. He could re-core radiators too. Um, he would always clean them up and paint them. And uh, one thing I do remember is every radiator that he completed a repair on, he had this powder. It was a uh, radiator sealant powder that he would throw in. It was a flaky stuff. It wasn't like the, the silver stuff, so don't get me going on that. But, yeah, he always threw a tablespoon of this powder in the radiator just as a check. He, he always sent them out repaired and solid, but because they were usually used old radiators, um, he could build custom radiators. So, anyhow, Bill was a, a guy that I, I would watch repair radiators. Um, I, I learned the reason for doing things and how to get them clean. And two, repairing a radiator is, if you think of it, it's just like repairing a copper pipe in a house. Now, most people would just cut them off and replace them because it's such a headache to clean. Uh, if you have a joint that's leaking in plumbing, uh, to clean it up and get it to seal properly. Well, of course, in a radiator, throwing it away isn't really an option. Uh, so. Yeah, you have to get in there and clean it. So, without any more further ado, let's get going on the uh, tractor and see what we can get done. So I've got the radiator removed from this Jetstar 3 tractor. I'm thinking it's a 1970 model. 51 years old. And here it is and the problem was it was losing coolant from this area it was coming out you can see this telltale sign if you can see in the shadow there there's a sign of where the coolant's coming out along here so what we need to do this is a soldering video 
So if we look here, we can see that the shroud is attached to the tank of the radiator here. It's also attached along the side here to the steel mounting bracket. It's attached on the bottom to the lower tank and it's attached all along the side again to the steel. Um, <clears throat> I previously repaired this tank uh, probably in the uh, unapproved pour way which is just bridging bridging the joint and of course if you bridge a joint you can imagine over time the debris in the joint will continue to corrode and rot and you'll have uh, basically rust jacking it's still rust even though it's not iron you'll have rust jacking push that solder apart and cause failure again so to fix this correctly this time what we need to do is pull the shroud off and move the sidebars and pull this top tank off so uh, yeah it's a little bit of a project you can see here where I desoldered these were just drilled holes and uh, that's where I resoldered after I uh, did it the last time I don't even remember when that was I know it do I did it I'm guessing it was gosh 10 years ago maybe sounds about right 10 years ago so yeah well what we need to do the job okay so I've got some good solder uh, I don't see markings on it because it's an old tube it's a rosin core and if you bend it and it's soft you know it's uh, probably a 50 50 or 60 40 which either one will work fine for the radiator you do want the lead content it's not we're not drinking the coolant uh, here's our electric striker I'm using propane gas with oxygen for heat I've got a genuine propane heating tip as opposed to a acetylene cutting tip which doesn't work too well got some brushes to clean up and we'll see how it cleans up we may have to grind some of the steel some devices to pry and I'm going to remove the radiator hoses also so <clears throat> yeah the shadows are bad so yeah this is a young radiator it says right here young radiator it's got the YR on the shroud says it was built in 1969 so probably the tractor was built in 70 uh, it could have been stockpiled it could have been a little bit newer but I think the jet stars were up until the jet star 3 was up until about uh, 71 I have to look at the jet star 3 super so
So I try to avoid bending. I just pry and lift, make it flex. Bare metal. Like this one is. We can see it's cracked here. And that was from having a dirty solder repair. So this has got to be desoldered here, cleaned completely, and resoldered. We know it's open here, so we don't have to desolder that part. it away. I have to be careful not to get it too hot because I may desolder the core, which if I do, I do. I'll check that when I uh, disassemble it. That's all there is to it. So here we can see it was poorly soldered here, around here. Particularly where I thought it was leaking, it doesn't look like it was leaking. So it was just running that way. There's also a bad solder joint here where it had been repaired and bridged the gap. Uh, appears to have been failing in this area. Any place like this. And even on the front. So 
that's the front left corner. Now this, this radiator had a hole in it and I repaired it in the tractor. You can see on the inside, maybe you can't because of the light, but uh, this hole was actually where the tube, where the tube was supposed to connect and bridge it and give it support. We know what that is, right? We open it up. It's kind of circular. That is the uh, tin foil plastic lid to an antifreeze container. It was blocking one of the cores completely lost one of the tubes. So, if we had a bad tube, and we have, um, these are pretty big, so on this type of radiator, you can actually just solder the tube if it's uh, mechanically sound. By mechanically sound, I don't, I mean it's not rotted, corroded, uh, or, or totally demolished. But uh, if we had to remove a tube on an automotive radiator, what we would actually want to do is clean out the, uh, get to the tube at the header. This end is called the header. Those are called the tanks, the header, the core, the tubes, fins. I'm not making this up here. Okay. So these are large tubes. So we would actually want to block that tube. We would want that cleaned out so we would get a full fill. So it's mechanically bonded to the brass and get a full fill. Um, you really don't want to be blocking the tube on a damaged tube tube because you always run the risk of it failing again. You can have corrosion inside. It's going to have the coolant just sit there without coolant flowing through it. So you want to take the coolant right out. You don't necessarily want to remove it because you don't want to upset the fins. But on each end is where you want to do the repair. Uh, not just block it in the middle. So yeah, so let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. For a cleaning solution, this is probably the only thing you want to stay clean. It's basically a liquid acid. I don't know if it says on here exactly what is in it, but it's a liquid acid. And I used to buy these in small bottles with a squeeze lid so you could squirt it on. The salesman at the welding supply store, which is where I got this, never heard of it. She tells me he hasn't been around that long. I acquired this, this little squirt dispenser here. You can use anything like an old saline bottle for your contacts.
This is just a little spritzer bottle for craft work. So the acid combined with the heat will clean all the impurities out of the uh, area that we want to solder. You know, we can use the wet rag method like you'd use in uh, household soldering, too. The wet rag is used to wipe away debris as well as to cool the solder and solidify it. is what's called tinning. Uh, if this is a brand new radiator, you probably wouldn't do it. You just flow it in like you do in household copper piping. But because it's used and it had solder on it previously, what we want to do is clean all the oxidation off and make sure it's got uh, a nice clean coat of solder, which is pre-existing. But spread that solder out and make sure it's fully adhered and bonded to the brass. I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's quite a bit of corrosion on the brass, so I'm going to have to go over this a couple of times with this acid. So you just squirt the acid on, and then to make it really effective quickly, you heat it. And you have to be careful not to heat it and dry it out. You just heat it so it acts on the corrosion and floats it away, and then you brush it and rinse it away. Um, Always being careful not to inhale it, not to get it on your skin, because it is acid. I have to be careful with my flame. I was actually melting my sawhorse. And with them now being like 30 bucks a pair for the cheap ones, I'd be a little careful. So because the tank fits on the inside, it's the outside of the tank that we need to do. 
Um, and you can see all the debris. So I think what happened was this great tractor got frozen. And you can see on the edge there how the, um, when it cracked it lifted up and then it just got soldered in. So all this, all this solder needs to come off the tank. So what I'm doing here is I'm being careful to get it hot enough just to melt the solder. I don't want to oxidize the tank or make it warp too badly. Just heat the solder up, brush it away, and then later on we'll make sure it's all thinned up. in the inside off just because I want it clean. I don't want any debris rounding that corner to get in the trays or the solder joint. So the right side mounting bracket cracked on the bottom tank as well, so I removed it, and it does need to be cleaned up, um, retinned, and resoldered when it's reassembled. I'm trying to remove as much 
rust in this spot as I can so I don't get rust jacking later on to uh, cause the radiator to separate which you know it's going to happen sometime but uh, yeah I'm trying to remove the rust and spread out the solder so I get as strong a bond as I can when I put it back together. So here we're cleaning up the edge of the tank where the mounting bracket attached. We have to do this at each location that we disassembled or that cracked. So there's three spots on the tanks, or three ends on the tanks, and we want to get it good and clean, remove the debris, remove the old solder, make sure it's bonded to the tank real well. Uh, it is a metal, so it's going to give us a good strong bond. Now finally, Everything is pretty well cleaned up, so I'm going to fit the tank first, do a dry fit. Um, we certainly want it to be able to go in here and go all the way to the bottom. And then we want to check the gap around to see if we have any warpage, anything's bent. And we do have a little bit bent underneath the inlet there, so we uh, will grab a pair of duckbill pliers and we'll get that area straightened out. If the gap is too wide, the solder will just flow into the header. We won't be able to uh, bridge that gap or fill that uh, joint. Uh, I'm not sure what the correct width of a gap is, but somewhere uh, a little more than touching and, and probably less than a sixteenth of an inch. Here's a little close-up showing the gap that we have to fill with solder. It's all nice and clean and not too wide. Um, any debris in there, we need the acid to float the debris away and we'll fill it with solder. So here we go, we'll spritz it with our acid flux and then we'll uh, get going on soldering this. As I go around each corner, I pay really close attention because that would be a really big spot for debris to pop up and give us a spot for a leak. So you just watch what you're doing and just make sure you have a nice puddle and a, a meniscus along the way. And you really almost don't need a pressure test. Now, I could have pressure tested this again at the end, but uh, I was pretty confident in my work.
Now here I'm just getting a good look at it, cleaning all the flux off it and the debris. Remember again, this is acid that you're putting on there so you don't want any residue left over. Attaching this looks like the right side mounting bracket. I've got it clamped on there gently. Uh, it's a plastic C-clamp so I've got it away from the joint. And we just heat it up enough to melt the solder and flow the solder into the previously tinned joint. I'm going to use my compressed air to blow the dirt out of the fins. I did the other side before, I didn't show it, so I blew it from the fan side first, and now I'm just cleaning it up from the front side. Um, I like the tube on my blow nozzle because it makes a more effective uh, air charge. It lets me get into smaller spots. So, yeah, with, with it apart and with the shroud off, this is just a good time and place to get this cleaned out. Uh, of course, in a farm tractor, you get debris in the core all the time so um, yeah you're always cleaning it and then I'm going to straighten the fins out too as I go so yeah this is a good time to get it done. Now just solder the bottom bracket on the tank. It's on the sides already, so we'll get this on the bottom. You can just hold it in with the hammer while you solder. It's a little cumbersome because I'm moving the radiator, but it works. So again, one more thing to clean. We have to clean the mounting flanges for the shroud. The solder on shroud, not a bolt on shroud. So scrubbed it off as much as I could, got the dirt out of there, used my little grinder to get some rust off, and again, there is lead in this, so make sure you're not breathing in any of the uh, powder. So we just get this cleaned off, and then we apply our acid, and we clean it, and then we retin it. Because we want to make sure that's clean. We want to make sure there's a clean solder all along that. So again, just like the tank, we want to set the shroud in place where it's going to be, make sure it's going to fit, look it over real well. Uh, this actually had a little interference by the uh, outlet that I had to correct. Um, but get it set right down as close and tight as possible so there's no big air gaps. We don't want to start soldering around one side and then have trouble and find out it's not going to fit somewhere else. Let's get this shroud attached now. We'll light the torch. We hold the torch to our ear 
and turn the propane on so we can hear it coming out. Then we add oxygen so we can hear the oxygen. Light the striker and then we adjust the flame where we want it. We'll put some of this acid on for flux and cleaning. And then we will just go right along that edge just like we did on the other things. Here we have to be mindful because we're only about half an inch from the seam in the uh, header in the tank. So we just need to get it hot enough to melt the solder and attach the shroud, but not so hot that we desolder the tank from the header. Again, we'll repeat the entire process here on the bottom of the shroud. Also being mindful that we are just about half an inch from the attachment point for the bottom tank to the bottom header. So we just go along there, just carefully melting it, adding solder as needed, letting it cool. Uh, just another thought, uh, make sure you're using the right solder because you try to use a solder with a higher melting point, you know, say uh, something that has silver in it, silver solder, or uh, maybe a no lead solder. If you've got a higher melting point and you're raising the temperature at the junction, you may be getting the rest of the object too hot. So you may end up having a problem with that solder joint, perhaps at the header, uh, because you're using a higher melting point solder. So, yeah, try to stick with the 50-50, 60-40 solder when you're doing a repair like this. Don't just grab your uh, household plumbing solder. Now we go along and do the side of the tank. And that's why they have these holes here and having it pre-tinned makes it real easy. You need good contact and you just heat it up and put solder in. Um, Solder is pretty strong. Remember, it is a metal, so just having a little contact here is all you need. Now, the final soldering I'm doing is covering that hole that was there from the support for the inlet. I found a copper or brass tag that was on the radiator. This was a probably an inspection tag. There was actually two or three of them on the radiator. So I used a paste solder that I dabbed on there just because I thought it might help. Could have just used my acid. And uh, I just set it over the hole and soldered it in place. When, uh, when complete, then you want to wipe the whole radiator down. This paste was kind of nasty to get off. I used my water and Terry cloth rag, but uh, yeah, I probably should have avoided the paste because it's such a mess. But uh, I wiped down the whole uh, the whole radiator and got all the acid off it and any loose debris before I did a rattle can paint job. I painted the core black. Uh, that protects it from corrosion if it does get any salt in there. Yes, yeah, so now this is how we finished it up. So you get a good look around there. I threw some yellow paint on it, but you can see there's no real uh, place for it to leak. I could put a pressure tester on it. Um, that's the uh, shroud. But uh, yeah, so this is what it looks like, like a hornet. Got the bracket back on here. OK, 
Okay, we're putting it back together to put it in the tractor. Gave it a nice coat of gloss black paint on the on the fins and the tubes. I strained out as many tubes as I could. Probably should try and get in there a little bit better. But yeah, so that's how it is. So yeah, the key is to remove it, get all the rotted, corroded um, lead out, get the lead out, get it clean to bare metal, and again, it can never be too clean, just like painting. It can never be too clean. Use your good uh, acid to float the uh, debris out, and uh, yeah, we got it. So I'm going to get that back in there, and then we'll have a look at it then. Okay, so hopefully you stuck around for the whole job and you learned something. It's not an easy process. Now, I probably had, I don't know how many hours, because I did it over a couple of days, but there was a lot of hours in prepping and cleaning and uh, soldering. And uh, I feel in the end, though, I got a very good product. I didn't worry about pressure testing it because I made sure it was clean and well soldered. Now, I can pressure test it in the tractor. But I just didn't want to go get uh, hoses and plugs and nipples and just, you know, have to pump it up. Uh, because I don't think it was necessary if you do the right so, job. So, I thank you for watching. And that's the way I do it.